I don't know about you guys, but my feet are loving this week so far. I'm, I'm not putting on all those miles and standing for hours and hours and hours. No and crowds in here. No crowds. They can walk <laughs> around. I'm not like full contact camera mode. You know, so that's kind of cool yeah. about it. Yeah, but I miss all the people and all the action. Nothing beats SEMA in Las Vegas. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah that's fun, right? And the food. The and dinners. The food. I mean, you know, being home is nice, but all the good dinners that are out there. Well, what's funny, though, is my Facebook history, you know, the memories that come up, uh -huh. I remember recording you because you lost your bag in a locked container. You had to climb over in the back of somebody to get into there to get your bag. I scaled Kyle Clark in order to get yes, the, uh, flex, uh, the flex wall because yeah, yeah. they built it extra high that year for some reason. So they knew that you were coming. <laughs> All right, once again, we are back for the live new product showcase. Since SEMA is not happening, we're bringing it to you. We have the one and only Justin Lobato, brand ambassador for PNS Products. So you know what we're talking about, right? I do. Oh, yes. yeah. One of us better know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. But yep. also, I want to let you guys know some of these little goodies right here, which this one is like hundred bucks. That one's like a hundred and some some odd dollars. We're giving these away, so I'll be announcing how you guys can win these at the end of this video. That's a so. really good deal. All right. So I'm out of here. You guys have fun. Thanks, Jens. Everybody loves free stuff, especially oh, free yeah. good stuff. Oh yeah, quality free. Well, Justin, how you doing? Good, Mike. How are you doing? Oh man, staying busy. Yeah. And uh, let's just dive right into this, because I know when I'm watching the video, I want to get right to the action. Yep. So we have three different coatings here, plus a panel wipe and glass polish. Correct. And these are all real vital products for a detailing car, you know, for the paint related, the glass related, uh, accessory items. So let's just start over here. Let's walk through them and talk through this. So in case there's anybody out there that may not know what you guys have at PNS, let's let them know. So this line, of course, being the double black line, uh, we have the Inspiration Ceramic Coating. So we've had this out for quite a few years now. Uh, it's a simple coating, it's layerable, it's a 9H, it has all the standard characteristics that most coatings have on the market. Um, and it delivers a three to five year durability with two layers. And it's ease of application is pretty straightforward. Um, overall, I mean, it gives you everything, like I said, that most coatings that people want in a coating, it has and it delivers on. Yeah, outlasts a wax or synthetic sealant. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Self-cleaning effect, so it washes yeah. faster, dries faster. If it's raining hard, it's going to clean your car just by being out in the rain. Yeah, and the biggest thing, you know, is when they mention and they have on the bottle for the marketing purpose, the whole 9H, what I tell people is, you know, paying attention to that's great, but I like to explain to my clients as, as a detail and run the detail business that that just basically helps strengthen the clear coat system to help with the more abrasion resistance and oh, for sure. work against micro scratches and swirls versus those traditional products like you had mentioned that aren't going to work so well like a coating does. Yeah, people, you don't want to get too focused on the whole 9H. What you want to be focused on is now that you've got the protection, mm. still wash your car carefully. Yeah. Take, yeah. take care of it, protect the coating, and it'll protect your paint job. Well, still wash the car is key because there's sure. some that are like, well, I got a coating on there, and I have to remind them it's not Star Wars, it's not a force field. You still have to wash it. <laughs> okay, so then that's the Inspiration Paint Coating. Mm -hmm. And then why is this product here? I've never seen this one before. So, PNS um, and Bob and Randy and everybody there, Dave had a different approach in regards to the maintenance of coatings. You know, a lot of times you would typically decontaminate the coated surface when it comes back after a couple months or a year based on where you live uh, in the atmosphere. And you would usually clay it and then use the dedicated spray topper from that brand to help bring back its hydrophobic characteristics and its gloss. However, sometimes you have to polish on the surface because sometimes those elements, you know, really cosmetically weigh in on, on the way that the coating performs and how it looks. So when you do that, it does abrade and take away a little bit from the foundation of the coating. So this kind of helps replenish that uh, as a once a year maintenance coating to say, and it can be used as a standalone as well. So if you have another vehicle in your lineup that you say don't want to go through all the work to do this, but you want to keep it simple and go with this, it's very user friendly. Um, the, the smell of it is very appealing. It has a cinnamon-like smell versus some of the other ones that are very aggressive with different solvents in them. Um, and overall, it helps bring back those characteristics that most people enjoy when they have that fresh coating on their vehicle. That's not bad. It yeah. smells like cinnamon candy. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> right around for the holiday season, right? Probably don't want to drink it though. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's a big boy hundred mil bottle. That's yeah, that's yeah. a good thing about it. So for the price point and you know how many applications you get out of that, uh, it's very favorable in regards to that, especially running a business or being at home and having multiple vehicles. Well, and one thing that I think is kind of genius, you know, the the guys there at the the canvas over there at PNS. Uh, coming out with a topper, a dedicated topper that is also a standalone product, um, you, you're going to be able to take care of any of your customers, no matter what their needs are. And, and damage does happen to people's cars. Something could happen, you got to repolish, uh, even yeah. lightly, you can go back in, quickly top it in that large size bottle, boom. Your, your car can't sit in a bubble, right? That's why there are so many options <laughs> and so many detailers on the market because there is a demand for the upkeep and maintenance of your vehicle. And, and as a business owner, too, looking at it, this is something, yes, it's great paired with the inspiration, but if you offer other brands in your lineup, it's something that could top mm. them as well. Yep. So now it caters to a, a lot of different brands as well as not just one. So gotcha. it's very versatile for that reason. And, and it could be someone, uh, since you've got a full-time detail business, someone could bring you a car and they maybe bought it used and it's, they know it's coated, but they have no idea what coating's on there. Yeah. No problem. You could put this right over yeah. the top of it. Gives you the ability and it makes the price point very favorable to them, keeping a good customer. Well, I'm sure you guys uh, sell a lot of that then. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one we like. And it, like I said, very easy. So to a consumer and prosumer, it's one of those ones that they don't have to worry about, you know, if they do have a high spot that could be very stubborn to remove. Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, and uh, what, what is the, the working time for that? You know, after you apply it on, do your four crosshatch pattern, uh, how much? How long do you have before you need to be starting to wipe that off? What's recommended? Uh, personally, you know, it's one of those things I look at visually. It has the rainbow flashing effect to it, mm -hmm. um, and that's ten. That's what I tend to look for. You know, especially here in Florida, right? With all the humidity, yeah. you know, we have different seasons that that sometimes the coating you get a little little bit longer, whether it be thirty seconds or a minute. And some summer times, not so much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I typically look for the rainbow in effect that that it causes because you know our state versus California versus New York, it's all going to be a little different. Um, but just kind of go in the guidelines of that that one you know that one minute range to say, sure. just to kind of keep an eye on it. It's kind of what I kind of figured, but you know. Just, yeah. Yeah. No. I'm trying to pull that information <laughs> out of you in case somebody's yeah. there's new to this stuff. Yeah. Okay. So then, what do we got over here? Now, this is also new for PNS this year. This is a brand new product. It is. So system actually. There's been a lot of demand in the market in general for glass coatings, and so this is Inspiration Glass Coating. It's called View. It offers six plus months worth of hydrophobic repellency characteristics to the windshield or of course all the glass and of course in any kind of inclement weather that helps because it helps reduce wiper use and also on the side windows or the rear glass you know on, on something like this here or here where the water runs off especially in Florida since it rains so much yeah and then even back here you know especially on SUVs where it collects a lot and they have their little wiper blade mm -hmm. it helps with better visibility so overall better safety but that, in regards to application, super user-friendly as well. And, of course, the guy that owns a 73 uh, Camaro like this, he drives in the rain all the time here in Florida. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> and these wiper blades aren't always the best of the best. You know, they're kind of a little limited on what they can use due to the... I was being that facetious. Gap this is the garage queen. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, in Oregon, uh, Justin, for most of my life, and it, it rains a lot. And uh, when I moved out here to Florida, I got caught in my first couple of rainstorms. The difference in the volume of rain that'll come down in a rainstorm here in Florida compared to Oregon is, you can't even, I can't even describe it. It's like, imagine 55 gallon drums of water just coming down, just whoo. And uh, people on the highway, they just literally, they're instinctively, they just pull over. They just pull over because if you don't, there's so much rain, you're gonna accident. And being able to see clearly with the addition of a coating versus just relying on your wipers, it's a great asset. Well, it's Mike, you also got to tell feature. them and inform them that you didn't have a top on your vehicle. You had no doors on your vehicle, so <laughs> you were basically in a convertible going down the road in the rain. Yeah, the first five years I had no top and no doors. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, it never bothered me. I also didn't have no carpet. There was nothing to get wet inside of the jimmy. So you just drill the holes at the bottom, let it all drain out. I just pulled the carpet out and just had sound deadening mat in there. Yeah. So uh, I like that blazer. It was nice. Or that was actually. Technically, it's a 1975 GMC Jimmy, but Blazer, same thing. 
Okay, so tell you what, um, now besides the coating though, mm -hmm. you know, glass gets contaminated just like the paint. So you can't, you know, you probably could just put this on, but it's better to prep the glass just like you would prep paint in order to put the coating on. So what would be the recommended products and steps for that? So the kit itself does come with an applicator pad which does help in regards to the application, of course, so you don't have to go out and buy one. Uh, and then it also comes with this, which I wanted to mention, which is the Inspiration Door Jam sticker. And this is good for whether it's gonna be the classic Inspiration coating, Soul, or the new View. It covers all those and allows you to sign off as the installer or the business to put that in their door jam, which will help if somebody were to purchase a vehicle that's been coated previously, like what you had mentioned. Exactly. Um, but as far as prep work, you know, you would clay the painted surface, or I'm sorry, the glass surface. I'm so used to dealing with paint. But clay the glass surface, get it nice and smooth, and then we have our new Clarity Cream, cream here. And that is something that you could do by hand or with machine. And this will allow you to remove any of the contaminants and bring a lot more clarity back to the surface to smooth it out and make it ready to go for the actual coating. And of course, by removing any excess residual product, you would come back with the coating surface prep, and spray it on the towel, wipe it down, and then you would be ready to go for your application of view class coating. Okay, well this, and, uh, this, is, this is actually a, a must-have product. Any place where you live where it rains, you get, uh, here in America we call it road film over across the pond. In the UK they tend to call it traffic film. Um, but what that is, if you look at any parking lot where the cars park, you'll see where they drip uh, fluids like transmission fluid, motor oil, power steering fluid. Well those same cars when they're driving down the road, they drip those same fluids. That's why when you look down the road on a on a sunny day, the center section's darker. Mm -hmm. That's where all the fluid is. So can you imagine it's raining and that all that oil has been dripping for weeks on end, now it mixed with the rainwater and the car in front of you throws that on your car. Mm. Now, it happens one time, no big deal, but usually on a daily driver, you're, you're repeating that process over, the, over and over again, and what you get is this road film on the paint and the glass, and you've got to mechanically abrade that off. A glass cleaner is not going to cut it, and so something that you can use by hand or machine tackles everybody out there, because there are some people out there that are uh, car enthusiasts who so don't mind doing this themselves, but they're not yet up to using a polisher. So uh, can we take a look? And this is a car left over from one of my classes. Let's polish the glass and put the coating on it. Yeah, and, and to your point where if somebody is encountering that much road film and they have to find themselves going back because, say, this is not as repellent due to that road film build, going back and using this, you could just go back over it and then reapply another layer of that and that would allow you to bring back or reset that clarity aspect because some roads are worse than others, that's for sure. Some cars drip more fluids yeah. than others. Yeah, but yeah, let's go ahead. <laughs> All right, so something like this with these chemicals always glove up, whether you're at home or professional. Oh, I'm a big nature. fan of gloves, and you know what Rennie Doyle always says? It's on your skin. It's on your tin, yeah. Yeah. So, safety first. Uh, although I'm sure those products are incredibly safe, you know. Yeah. You just don't want to drink them, you know. Even though it does look like there's Listerine, but <laughs> one looks like Pepto Bismol. Pepto Bismol and Listerine, you know. <laughs> it's a good evening, a good Saturday night. Um, <laughs> so making sure it's clean, which we already did. We went ahead and wiped this down. But then going into the Clarity Cream. Now the good thing is for consumers, those that don't have a polisher at hand, you could go ahead and take the Clarity Cream, shake it very well, and then go ahead and place some on. I prefer a terry cloth or microfiber applicator versus foam. It has a little bit more bite to it for the glass. Yeah, the fibers are a form of abrasive. Correct. Gentle abrasive. Yep. And then you could go with your Mr. Miyagi style approach, the wax on, wax off. May he rest in peace. Yes. Inspiration to detailers around the world. <laughs> Definitely glad I, I noticed a, a catchphrase, I you say. <laughs> um, so you work that in and there's no setup time or anything specific. I mean, you can let it dry to make sure it comes off a little easier, which only takes a couple seconds. Um, you work that off. Now, is this a mechanical type polish that has some sort of abrasive technology, or is it chemical only? 
Um, on this one, it's chemical and then mild abrasive. Okay. Glass yeah. safe abrasives. Yes, yes, because there are some of those elements that, you know, it has to chemically, but also physically. It's a good combination to have a little bit of both. Yeah, and that's where, you know, and just using it for glass polish in general, mm -hmm. if you, even if you're not applying a coating to help with better clarity or just making sure that the windshield performs as it should, you know, that's a big help. Um, then you could get into mechanical polishing, which we have the Flex Pixie here, which is the three inch battery operated. And then from our, or from the PNS carries the Reflection Artist pad line, this is our blue pad our medium polish pad. So this is good for glass. I've always preferred this one on glass. It works really well. And put in your clarity cream on here. Just kind of working that in so I don't get any immediate sling. Pad yeah, is, we don't want to throw nothing down no, the fresh air grill. No. Or <laughs> this pad is directly oh, out on, of the Mike. package. You know how to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then something like this. And the standard setting on this, you could stick with that. I like to bump it up just one. That's all you really need. I'm trying to work this around so we don't get any sling on this gentleman's vehicle. It's just an old two-door Chevy. Yeah. So you could go ahead and do it that way. Where this is going to be faster, more effective, more efficient, especially for when time is money running the business. This will allow you to kind of do it that way. And you could do it with a larger polisher. So if you're you don't own a three inch you could obviously you know use a five inch as well yeah, but any any orbital polisher even a rotary yep could be yep. used on glass and and one of the things about uh working by machine versus working by hand is the machine never gets tired <laughs> plus the joke we always got Nancy. we don't sell mm -hmm. hands we don't sell hands and it's not my car we sell the pixie it's not my car that's my slogan <laughs> for my business. So I usually go on a crosshatch pattern, up, down, left, and right. That way it allows me to have a more uniform approach. And then a lot of these vehicles all tend to be different on where the wiper cowl lands. So you got to be very careful where it has the painted lip. You want to tape that or put some uh, microfiber careful. tiles yeah. there. Um, so once you get that part of it done, obviously doing both sides or as many sides as you're gonna to wanna to do the application for. Go ahead and take that off. Now, anybody that's watching this, if you've never polished the glass on your car, it's real easy to see if there's a film there. Usually, um, when you're washing it or if you're using a glass cleaner, you spray some on and wipe it. For a brief moment there, as you're wiping that glass cleaner off, you'll see a film show up. Then it'll kind of, as that glass cleaner evaporates, it disappears. But that's one of the ways to tell if you've got a film there. Plus, you can tactically you mean I can feel this? Oh yeah. And I can feel this, and I can tactically feel that side is a lot smoother, which means it's also a lot cleaner. Yes, and some of these you got to be careful for because some new vehicles tend to, from the ports that they're shipped out, have come preloaded with glass protectants at some level. It's part of the deal with the manufacturer or whatever. Mm -hmm. But just to kind of know that out the gate will help because you don't want any kind of weird reaction with the new application, of course. Um, so getting all the clarity polish off, which as you've seen was super simple. It doesn't become tacky or stubborn. Um, then just to ensure everything, I like to come back instead of with a microfiber towel, just because sometimes there may be a little bit of lint left behind, I come back with paper towels and take my paint prep. I'll spray the paper towel directly. And then I'll just wipe to make sure I remove all of those polishing oils from the clarity cream and the, and the purpose is for that is so that coating can completely form a hundred percent bond of the glass so there's nothing there that's going to hinder the adhesion of the coating to the glass correct yeah it's that full integrity of that bond absolutely and uh, in this case with it being an older vehicle it's a little bit harder to get to these wiper arms but when you're finalizing with this approach with the paper towel and the surface prep, I'll usually take the wiper arms and clean the blade itself just for if there's any buildup. And that way when they get back on the road after this application or I get back on the road, I don't get stubborn streaks that happen immediately. Yeah, so um, I'm sure you're on the same page as me, but um, anytime if you're doing this for a customer, if you're going to machine polish your glass and put a coating on it, I always like to ask them, when is the last time you changed the blades? Maybe because the best time to do it is, after, is before you go back and put this car back into service. 
especially if it's already been a couple of years here in Florida, that rubber oxidizes oh, daily. Gosh. And, and uh, you know, most people, they wait till they see the rubbers, you know, coming apart and, you know, <laughs> coming apart <laughs> it's on the actual at blade, you. <laughs> stripping off, and then the wiper blade hits and you get a scratch. So oh. uh, wiper blades aren't that expensive in the big picture of things. It's better to go ahead and just replace them when you do something like this. Then you have everything working for you so you can see perfectly in inclement weather. Yeah, and for the drier markets or our market in Florida, I mean, you're looking at every couple of months of change. And people think it's once a year, and it's not. Yeah. It, it's definitely every couple of months in some cases, unless you're getting a super premium brand yeah. that, that offers some kind of different material to say. But yeah, so that would definitely be an approach. And then going into the coating itself. Thank you, Mike. Go ahead and shake this up. Everything I always, before I open it, I always shake it because you don't know how long it's been sitting on a shelf, maybe a couple, couple weeks, couple days, either way. It only takes a few seconds. It guarantees a uniform mixture, especially anything with abrasives. You know, abrasives sometimes can settle towards the bottom, uh, shaking a product at before you use it, as well as when you're using it, just ensures that you're going to get the, you know, the best benefits of whatever it is the abrasive you're using, car polish, or in this case, glass polish. All right, and then for the applicator, the first go around, I tend to want to put a little bit more on the applicator just so I could prime it to make sure I get full coverage of the product being on there. And the good thing about this little 30 mil bottle, just doing windshields, you could probably get up to about 10 windshields out of this little bottle. Uh, that's a lot of glass coverage. Yes. So a little bit goes <laughs> a long ways. So I'll usually start in the middle and bring it out and I'll frame out my work area and then I'll bring it back in for my crosshatch approach. Now in here with this lighting, it's very hard to see the application. So you, can you can't really see the film on there just because yeah, of the way the lights are Just because the way, yeah, it's so clear. I can what, see what it now. Will your light help you? I can see it from the right angle if I do some bob. There's weaving. one on the, <laughs> the, the roll around. So the crosshatch approach is, is one. I mean, you could still go with the massaging it in or the Mr. Miyagi approach, as we call it. Yeah, I can see the film from yep. here. And this doesn't take long to set up. This, this has somewhat of a, a flashing of that rainbow effect as well. You kind of let that set up when you can see it from the different angles of it flashing off. And you wipe it right off, and you'll be good to go. That's it, real simple. It would be a good test panel just to see how long we can leave it on here. Oh, we no. got all the tools no. in here to take it off, so why not? No, I, I think what he's joking about is uh, I, I am. If a, in so, some coatings, when they set up, if you don't get them off, you get no high spots off, you're going to have to compound them off. Oh, goodness, yeah. And yeah. Not that we couldn't compound or even take the glass polish and work them off of this glass. It's better just to, hey, how about this idea? Follow directions. Yes. Now, this controlled environment with you having AC in the garage, mm -hmm. it's going to take a little bit longer for flash time. But those that are out in the elements, be mindful of that, that this is a great example. But when you're out in the elements, the flash time is going to be that much quicker due to heat index and humidity. And wind. Yeah, yeah. and wind. Oh, yeah. Now, a question that I always see people ask when it comes to the application and then the removal of any kind of coating is, what about the towel? Do you recommend just washing that right away or is it gonna crystallize in that towel so you gotta throw it away or turn it into a door jam or engine compartment towel? Personally, what I like to do is I have where I have a five gallon bucket with some APC in it. I'll go ahead and throw them in there. Uh, different coatings or different material with the coating brands, they have what I call, some have higher solids than others that you could immediately notice mm -hmm. such as, this applicator pad with certain brands, it may get super hard. And mm -hmm. then some brands, it doesn't get hard at all. So that, the ones that tend to get that super hardness, I throw those away. Cause yeah. those, you can't, you can't bring that towel back. We do the same practice here. Typically we'll have a five gallon bucket, throw about four gallons of water in there, yep. mix up some APC, dunk it in there. Now it's away from the oxygen. So it's completely shut of the water. And then as soon as we're done, it goes to the wash machine, goes to the dryer. I inspect them back here on the stainless steel workbench visually and tactically. Mm -hmm. If I feel one that feels like it's coarse or scratchy, 
it becomes a door jam towel. Or I call them dead towels. I have a bin for them. tire towels. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. call them scrap rags around here. <laughs> or the oil towels. Yeah, scrap rag. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, what I was talking about is when we teach our classes here, a lot of times these uh, custom cars like this, they will tend to drip. And so over there on the fire extinguisher, I keep a couple of towels ready to go to, as I like to say, these uh, classic cars will tend to mark their spots or territorial. And we don't want to step in it and drag it around. And no, especially so. if you have to get in a car and move it, right? It, well, yeah. And exactly. you're leaving your footprint. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, you know, the first side of the towel I took off, it was very straightforward, very simple. And then I did flip my towel just for any residual. And then that's it. I mean, it doesn't take much to, to do the application, which is really nice, especially for a consumer purchasing it and doing it for their first time. Um, but overall, even in the professional approach, again, time is money. So you're able to do that, get it on, especially if there's two of you working, it allows you to expedite that time. The buddy system. Yes, the buddy system. Um, but that's it. Yeah, this thing is good to go. And then, I mean, literally within 15 minutes or so, she should be ready to go to go out in the elements and be ready to perform. Put it back into service. Yeah. Okay, well, Justin, that's, uh, that's really cool. We've got a uh, dedicated ceramic paint coating. We've got a maintenance product. Now we've got a glass polish, panel wipe, and a, the view glass coating, all from PNS. Something mm. for every part of the car, basically, on the outside. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And you know what the right. really good news is? We ain't done yet. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. what the really good news is. We're we still some, live. We, 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 we got some questions. Contest. Yeah, I know. We got okay. questions and stuff. Why don't you guys come back around over this way? And I'll bring up some questions from I'll share the my good news later. Yeah. <laughs> I bet I know where that good news is going. It's <laughs> what I do. All right. For all you people out there, let me put my head on. And dun, dun, dun. where's my... It is time for viewer questions. You ask, we answer. And this time we have the vendor to answer for us. So that works out great. At least it does for me. Maybe Mike too. Uh, let's go to, hmm, JL is in the house. Jimmy Santos is saying JL is in the house. All right, so you have a fan club. Then let's go here, let's go to Jake. I would love to get your input on panel wipe. Use some wax grease remover, some IPA, some dish soap water, etc. You. You hear some people say harsh cleaners could hurt the paint. Just trying to navigate my way through all this. I don't want to hurt the paint. I just want to clean it, clean it so polish works and, and uh, wax, et cetera, and some bonds and all. So what is your feeling on that? So um, my run through with a lot of different panel wipes, you know, the, the, the whole foundation of when you're polishing is making sure that you're using a compound or polish that once you finish, it's not going to leave a lot of things behind such as fillers because that's obviously the biggest thing that we have an issue with, with bond. So if you start there with the foundation of a good polish that don't have that, then it's going to help in regards to setting up the paint for proper bond. And then of course, getting into actual panel prep products, there are many different ones on the market that have alcohol, solvents, mixtures of this, that, and the other thing. Some are way more aggressive than others that have to be diluted. It's understanding those, and maybe if you're with a specific product line, understanding the best process for that specific product, but look for something that works for you. I personally enjoy using this paint prep. It is a light solvent with IPA in it as well, but it's the harmony of those chemicals that work together to where it's not too aggressive, because I'm sure you've noticed some of these, you spray directly or you spray on a towel, and it has a lot of bite to it, especially on softer paint systems. And so for that reason, you go to wiping and you compromise all the hours and hours of work that you've put in correcting the paint, making it look beautiful. So something that is uh, useful and user friendly for yourself, you have to definitely try different products to understand what works best for you. Um, why not try paint prep first? You may have, I, I would say uh, there's a couple things that play, come into play when you're using a panel wipe to chemically strip the paint after your paint correction steps before going to the coating steps. First of all, you have to have high quality towels. You need to inspect them, make sure they're not contaminated. One sharp particulate embedded into the weave of the towel and you're gonna push that across the paint. You spend hours polishing and you're gonna, the, the towel's gonna scratch it. So make sure your towels are good. Then as far as the panel wipe goes, uh, at some point, 
you know, I know it's it's great for all of us detailers in the online world to be curious and want to play our own canvas. So buy IPA and try to dilute it yourself. But how about just trust in the brand? You know, just trust the brand. These uh, PNS has a chemist. That's his job is to put together the right chemicals to make a panel wipe that is effective and safe. So pick a brand you know and trust and go with it and make sure your towels are clean. So yeah, and just to give you a little history too in, in PNS with the brothers Bob and Dave Phillips, you know. Dave is the chemist to the company. He went into the business, it's a family business, and this is something that he has a passion and drive for, uh, not just one that signed on as a chemist for a paycheck. And that's not to throw shade at anybody else, but in general, you know, when he's doing this, because it is a family business, there's a lot more invested, a lot more skin in the game. So for that reason, they're gonna make products that have been tried and you know a lot of R&D behind them amongst other detailers and amongst themselves in the lab so this is something that you know if you like it and it works for you great there's a lot of stuff on the market to choose from but at least try it without you know not just yeah. ruin it out. PNS is a good brand I, I, I can tell you there's nothing I've ever used in the line that has not uh, performed as advertised. Correct. It's a good brand it's a good line. All right, let me move along. This is Michael O'Neill. He's saying hello from Quebec. Uh, we have Michael, another Michael. How often do you recommend full service maintenance on a vehicle? Full service maintenance as into like what kind of treated surface, like wax, sealant, coating? Nah, I would say well, service All that's going to depend yeah. on how the car is used, where you live, how it's driven, where it's stored. You know, some people store their car in a garage when they're at home at night. It's out exposed to the air. Every day they go to the parking lot. Uh, some people got a garage they can park in when they get to work, so their cars are never exposed. So that's a great, very, it's a great question, but it's a very open-ended question. Mm -hmm. Also comes into how how do you wash the car? Do you run it through a Swirlomatic brush style car wash? Oh. Do you carefully wash it by hand yourself? Take ownership of the car wash process. So it's a great hypothetical, open-ended question, but there's there's no set answer. There's a lot of variables like inside. A lot of, of variables. variables. Yeah. You know, the most important thing is is. Most people, if you think about it, the thing that is done most to the car is it's washed. It's corrected and coated once in a while, but it's probably washed all the time. And I'm always stressing this to people. Take a look at your wash mist. Take a look at your wash media. Use the right car wash. And, uh, you know, every, how long anything lasts always comes down to how the surface is touched. Very Absolutely. true. Absolutely. Wash it with the brick. Ain't gonna look good, ain't gonna last long. You're gonna get brick results. No, <laughs> ba -da -ba -ba. I love brick. Good question, but. All right, we have Sarah is saying sweet ride. Yes, it is. Uh, we have Kevin, which is saying, I like that clarity cream. Uh, Thank you. We, we have Reed coming in. Hi, guys, what's up in New York? We have Gaston saying hello to you, do, to you two. Uh, oh, hey, all right, here's a good one. Jimmy has a good question. Would you recommend to repolish of glass coating in six months? I think it all depends on performance. I mean, if you're not noticing anything lagging in the performance area, then it's not needed. Maybe topping it with something if the product line provides a topper of some sort. Um, like, for example, with this, you could probably resort to bead maker. Um, but if there is somewhere where you're seeing a lack of performance, then maybe repolishing and reapplying. And again, everything's different in regards to even what Mike said. There's a lot of variables to that with glass being the, the leading edge and the blunt area where everything hits. Mm -hmm. So is, there's so many variables to that. So you just kind of have to monitor it and make the best judgment from there. And, and there can be, outside of the normal things, like having the wipers run across the glass, that's an abrasion taking place. So if you live in, uh, say, Southern California, uh, and you know, hardly ever rains. You're hardly ever using your wipers. A lot of the street rods down there, they take the wipers off. You live here in Florida. I mean, you can set your watch by the rain in this area. About three o'clock every day, it's gonna you're gonna get a shower. And if you're driving, you're gonna be running the wipers. And then there's things that are out of the normal. Um, right down the road from us is uh, a, a company that builds custom yachts, and a lot of times they're painting them in outdoor environments. At least doing some of the prep work. All that overspray can land on your windshield. So you might have a great uh, water beating taking place and wiper yeah. removal of the water and the next day all of a sudden something's happened and you could have overspray industrial fallout on the glass so if you start to see the performance of the coating fall off do a couple little things first of all wash it and do the baggie test fill the glass with your with a baggie just like you would the paint and see if you can find something that's on there and if you do detect it then it's time to you know clay polish with the clarity and put the coating back on Okay, all right. Moving along, Michael O'Neill, is a green prep also good for painted surfaces or just glass? 
it is good for both, for painted surfaces and glass. So it, even though it says paint coating surface prep, just take away the paint part and call it a coating surface prep. <laughs> <laughs> Marketing, we need a label change, roll it out. Uh, Robert, uh, love P&S bead maker. How long does it, does it last on a truck that is three to four weeks? Uh, how long does it last on the truck? Is it three to four weeks? That's what it so bead maker, it, the, the thing I love about that, it's a, it's a polymer based product. So it does have some great durability to it, but it could have short term and long term. And what I mean by that is that if you're not prepping the surface right and you're just slapping it on real quick, then you may get short term results. But if you go through the process of proper prep, whether it be clay, chemical decontamination or polishing, then you're going to get longer out of it. The heavier you put it on, the better it sets up as well for durability. And if you're using it after every wash as maybe a drying aid, that will help create what I call a film build, which will also complement the existing application to last longer and perform and do what it's supposed to do. All right, let's go to Reed. How long does a topper ceramic last as a standalone? Trying to use ceramic that lasts six months to a year because they need at least four, four hours to set up and not get wet. I, look, I work outdoors, so I need to set up fast. Hmm. That's a tough one. I think I think you said earlier that this is it lasts up to a year. Correct. As the topper is a standalone product or over something else. But if you're working outside and you need something to set up quickly, that's you know, look, look there's no easy answer to that. You know, that's that's part of the the hassle of being mobile. And I've been mobile before, and it's just it's a problem. Sometimes the best you can do is the best you can do. And and to add a little bit to that, again coming from an operating shop. You know, I bend the rules a little bit. I've, I pushed the envelope in a lot of these coatings and what their turnaround time is. And we found that sometimes after about an hour or two, due to our heat index and humidity, uh, we're able to top it with its, you know, brand specific topper and then be able to send it out to the elements. And that's pretty safe in that approach. Now that's not safe in every state, but I have known here in Florida to do that. And we haven't had any backlash from that or any coating issues whatsoever, water spot and you name it. It's been very successful taking that approach. But in, in a perfect world, after you put your last coat of whatever you're going to use on there, in a perfect world, you don't want anything touching that surface, whether it's moisture or even a towel. You don't want, you don't want, you don't want it disrupted is the word. So whatever it is going to do, it's doing it on its own. As soon as you go in there and keep wiping on it or introduce it to uh, rain, that's being disrupted is the word. So you want to leave it. So it's not disrupted. So you hear it first, no disruptions. No disruptions. <laughs> All right, uh, ooh, here's actually a good one. And I think a lot of people could actually benefit from this since you guys are two industry pros here. What is a good method to get into the corners of glass without marring? Most glass polishes on the market tend to micro mar when used by hand in corners of glass with my experiences. Honestly, just being delicate with an applicator pad or a towel and just not be technique being, then yeah technique and you know not a whole lot of elbow grease and downward pressure that way you're not creating that I, I I actually I'm not sure I understand it because if you're using a glass safe polish it's not gonna mar the glass uh, but to tell how I do it is I take the Rupes so I put it in rotary mode and put a one inch pad on there like a microfiber pad or even one of their sharp foam cutting pads and I get into the corners I do what I call edging I edge the windshield I wrote an article about this about three weeks ago with the brand new 2020 Porsche, brand new Porsche, total mess of water film, had drizzle stains on all the glass. And normally I tackle that with a, you know, the large pad orbital polisher that you can't get in around the window frame real tight. And if you don't it's get really that, tight, tight yeah, if you don't too, get yeah. that, then when it gets wet, you can see where you didn't polish. So I do what I call edging. I edge it first with the nano and rotary mode, then come back with the big pad and knock it out. But you know, I always use products that are safe for the application they're intended for. And glass is really hard. I've never seen anything I've ever used mar the glass. Could it be that maybe the corners of the glass weren't properly cleaned and they're picking up some dirt and stuff? Well, that I are maybe, but I glass is really hard. Yeah, so. some of the glasses though can be softer. Like I noticed on the Dodge glass, like with window tinting, even using a plastic razor blade to try to remove the oil stickers can tend to like leave light scratches behind. It's just weird. Like some of these manufacturers, I don't know why or what they've resorted to, mm -hmm. but some of them tend to be a little different. That Cost. May, <laughs> that may be where they're experiencing that on on, a, on a, a, a newer model vehicle that has that's subject to a softer like glass of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, side glass, I'm not, I've never noticed that. It's mainly windshield, but yeah, it's. 
could be time to get a new product. Or try a new applicator. Different. It might try, be the applicator. Try a new product. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, don't know why my restream isn't coming in from YouTube, but I see my comments over here. I've got Ron Shoop from YouTube. Is the glass coating good for a certain time after opening? Does it expire? Oh, good question. That is a good question. Um, you know, personally, I've never experienced it because I go through it pretty quick, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's open, it's gone. It's <laughs> open, it's gone, no. Um, I figure, you know, if you're... What I do in storing something like this, and there's a couple of different ways. Um, if if you have concerns about any of your coatings in general, um, and this is going to sit on your shelf for a while, you could take this, put the bag on it, close it back up to seal it. That oh, way okay. you could make Double sure you, you lock out any of the air. And then I also put my coatings in a refrigerator as well. Uh, and that helps with shelf life, I've noticed. So that preventative maintenance to something that you know is not going to be used often will help. But if it sits there and it sits there long enough, you just got to move more of it. Nothing yeah. lasts forever. It's time yeah. to coat your neighbor's glass on their <laughs> yeah. heart. Jim? Run a special just to get through it. Yeah. Hey, be a good neighbor. Be a good neighbor. No, that's, that's already taken. <laughs> All right, let's go here. Jose, uh, awesome show. Thank you very much. I just bought the Clarity Cream and was wondering what steps can make me successful in removing small pits on a windshield. Thank you. I own a 60,000 mile freeway driven car. That's a different polish. You're going to need something with cerium oxide. We just made a video about that. You can find it on the Auto Geek YouTube channel. And uh, um, I, I have a write up on removing pits. It was chemical staining that caused it actually. And uh, But uh, that's a totally different type of procedure than what this is for. This is for what's called topical glass polishing. You polishing. want to explain that so that way people yeah. understand? So topical glass polishes is removing things that are on the glass. Road film, industrial fallout, drizzle stains, things that have got onto the glass and impacted hard enough that they, they're not wiping off, they're not washing off. Defects that are in the glass are going to take a totally different type of abrasive technology, primarily cerium, cerium oxide. Also takes a very specific type of applicator pad and a lot of muscle and a lot of time and a lot of downward pressure and it's very messy. You're gonna want. It wasn't messy for me. It wasn't hard for me. Yeah, I, I watched but, you uh, do it. <laughs> watch, that vid watch that video that we put out up on our YouTube channel. Yeah, it's in the live. Uh, how, how to polish? How to remove scratches and water spots from glass? It's in our live uh, detailed and glasses playlist. There's some extreme cases where it's so pitted that it just replacements only answer, unfortunately. True. And we, we answer that in the video because uh, th while that is true, if you take a car like this and you think you're going to replace the windshield and it's going to be cheap, fast, and easy, think not always true. So sometimes it's going to be more effective over the long run to fix the original glass versus pull it out because then you're going to find rust and then you're going to start chasing that rust and you just turned a glass windshield replacement project into a total rotisserie car restoration <laughs> process and the wife's going to kill you. Uh, well, they, you know, strategic, man. There's like, well, I removed the glass, now i got to replace the entire car. You just got to take a, take a look and put everything into context. You okay. Know, brand new Honda, break the windshield, have it replaced. Classic car. Whoops, a rock fell through. in Florida. Watch the video. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, let's go to Mike G up on YouTube. Is there a wait time before adding a second coat with view? Um, you know, I know that it's 15 minutes to release it, so... I mean, at least give it an hour, I would say, if you were going to top it. Um, but one layer works pretty darn good in regards to its performance and, and durability. There's not really not much of a, a benefit to stacking yeah, it. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's not made to be a layerable system. Not to say that you can't, but one layer should do the job for you when you put it on thick enough and let it set up. Yeah, if you just do a great job of putting one application on, one and done. Right. Correct. Set it and forget it. Set it, forget it. All right, Mr. K from YouTube. Great stuff, gentlemen. Thank you very much. How much would you charge for this service? So as far as glass application goes, um, anywhere from, I would say, 100 to $150 for a windshield. Um, that's typically what we charge at our shop in general. I mean, I've seen it as low as $50 with people running specials just to get it out in their market. Um, so it's, it's a lot of variables to that question because everybody charges different. Everybody's wages of what they want to earn are different, whether you're mobile or a fixed location. And yeah, what the market in your area is Bingo, going all these variables. But yeah, I mean, I would say no less than at least $50, but upwards of 150 And then you got to think too, if you, they want to do the whole vehicle and all the glass, some people like to do like a package deal where it's like a set rate. Don't 
don't cut yourself short. I mean, you have a windshield, let's just say this is 125, and then you look at the you know, cubic square feet of this glass and both these windows here, both these windows are probably equivalent to what's close to the space or surface area on this windshield. So, and then the same thing with the back window. So you figure if you're getting 125 there, another 125 here, that's 250, 75 here, you, you know, 300, give them a deal for 250, boom, now you got the whole glass of the vehicle you could offer the service for 250 and do all the glass. Yeah, well, there you go. start to finish, you're probably looking at least two hours of time to polish, prep, coat, and then do the cleanup. 125 an hour. <laughs> not One, bad. Not bad. All right, let's go over here. J.R. Beltry, uh, hi from the Dominican Republic. Thank you for tuning in from over there. PNSB Maker is a money maker here. One of my of my detailing packages. It is. I Very probably, nice. probably should put like some dollar signs yeah, or something. Going back to that last topic, here's one thing I'd recommend and that I teach in my classes. Is if you're going to do any glass polishing and you're also going to wash the car, do the glass polishing before you wash the car. And that way if you get any splatter from machine application, that'll all come off when you wash the car versus wash the car and dry it. car's perfectly clean. Now you polish the glass. If you've got to come back and start wiping panels off, that's just wasted steps, wasted time. Double the work and Double residue the control. So. There's some, there's some things in a car detailing flow that you always try to do the things that make the car messy first, then wash the car. Headlight restoration, glass polishing, engine detailing, even wheel and tire. So get all those things knocked out, then start at the top, work your way down, save steps, save time, be a lot more efficient. Okay. Uh, a couple more questions. Oh, actually, there's a good one. Cure for wiper chatter from North Pole. Hey, Santa Claus is tuning in. Um, what would you guys recommend for wiper chatter? Well, what we just showed, go polish, put the coating on, replace your blades, do it all at the same time. A lot of times it falls back on the blades, to Mike's point. You know, if your prep work is solid, then the only thing that you have that's a culprit to the issue would be the wiper blades. Inferior blade? Yeah. yeah. Or, some... or used and abused blades that need repair, well, I mean, replaced anyway. Blade technology's come a long ways. Uh, you know the old saying, you get what you pay for? Oh, yeah. There's some really nice blades. We're not going to say some name brands on here, but if you do your research, there's some really nice blades, new materials that they use with these blades that'll alleviate that problem. Yeah, yeah. My, my son, uh, my oldest son, Izzy, when he first got his first car, he was like, Dad, my wiper blades aren't working anymore. I'm like, well, just go down you know, to the car shop and get some wiper blades. So he's down there. Now, you got to know my son. He's like a penny pincher. When he walks, he squeaks. I mean, he, he's a college student. <laughs> he, he absolutely, he, he loves saving money, which God bless his heart. Uh, I'm glad that I raised him that way. But at the same time, he's down there and he texts me and he's like, Dad, there's one for seven dollars and there's one for twenty four dollars which one do i get and i'm just like well sometimes you have to pay for stuff and i go the seven dollar one you're going to be replacing that in like a month where the twenty four dollar you might get six months down here and i go yeah. so you know it's up to you and he started doing it he's like well i guess if i do it in that four months seven dollars yeah okay yeah, i'll be cheaper to buy the other one so sometimes it is better to get better so sorry Izzy, for telling your story well, just, but besides the price it's the it's the material itself uh is just it works better than just your standard rubber wiper yeah. blades yeah so if, if you've got a car with a chatter problem start with uh polishing the glass in a minimum replace wiper blades you know if you're going to polish the glass you might as well put the coating on too yeah and if and if you continue to see the issue after you go through that whole process then that might be something in the atmosphere yeah i'd suggest first thing next thing you do is next time you wash the car wipe it clean do the bagging test take a look and see if you can feel something tactical on that glass my guess is are you going to feel something you're yeah. going to shock it's going to shock you all right, this is coming from Kyle Kamas. How long does it last? I don't know which product you're talking about, so if you can just Last go down forever. The, <laughs> How long Lifetime. does it, it <laughs> last forever? So. <laughs> View is six plus months. Uh, depending upon your area, you may get less, you may get more, but on average, six plus months. Sole coating. This is going to be as a standalone, you're looking at roughly around a year based on how well you take care of it and again the atmosphere that you have your vehicle in. And then as a topper, doing it once a year for the actual Inspiration ceramic coating that was already applied as a base layer. Okay, then I think I have one more question right here. Uh, let me go through the YouTube ones real quick. Uh, Mike G says thanks for the answer, Justin. Yeah. Uh, let's go over here to Facebook. Jason! One more question. After a fresh respray, how long should a detailer or consumer wait before coating can be applied? This question comes up often. All the time. It's 30 days standard. 
at minimum. Uh, some paint systems tell you 90 days, the painters or whatever the case may be. Um, there are coatings that claim to be uh, permeable. A lot of, yeah. Yes, I, I always slip on that one, but what he said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it basically allows the paint to breathe in simple terms, all right? Um, so, but again, still be cautious because this is somebody else's investment, not yours. So I would say, yeah, at least 30 days, you know, talk it over with the painter, see if it's baked. Ambient cure versus baked cure are two different types of cures. Baked cure will allow you to get uh, a faster turnaround for application to be able to get it in Speeds quicker. the whole process Correct, up. yeah. And as for ambient, it's just you're at the mercy of whatever the painter says. I, yeah, those are great answers. And uh, uh, Justin's right. It's, it, it, typically, it's 30 days air cure. Some paint manufacturers recommend 60, some recommend 90. The hard part is actually finding from the manufacturer what they recommend because you got to start at the body shop and ask them what paint brand they're shooting. And ask the painter. The painter should know this. Most painters go to a school put on by the manufacturer that they're using uh, for paint supplies. But minimum 30 days. And what I always try to look at is, you know, let's look at the context. Is it a car like this that just got a custom paint job? If it is, what's the hurry? It's going to go sit in a garage. Let yeah. 30 days go by. Yeah. Yeah, but now if it's a 1998 Honda and you wrecked it and you had the front fender repainted and you want to put it back into service, well, then I can see why there might be more of a rush to get it protected. But even if you still wait 30 days, your thing paints pretty tough anyway. Just wait the 30 days, then do your paint correction and put the coating on. Uh, I, I, I've seen this question come up for the last 20 plus years. I've been answering questions about it online and I always have to ask, what's the hurry? Okay. Yeah. So put things in context, let the paint cure out. By the way, one time I, uh, people always say, well, modern paints are, are chemically cured, they're catalyzed, you don't gotta wait at all. But a very good friend of mine who's a really smart chemist says, Mike, if you painted a car, a couple hours later, you moved it from the body shop, put it in your garage and closed the door, let it sit out there for a couple hours, walk back out, open the door, what do you think you're gonna smell in that garage? And the answer is solvent, okay? Yeah. So even though they're chemically cured, they're still outgassing to a certain level for hours, if not days. So let that paint cure because of all the time and money invested into getting the paint on there before you go and seal it. Patience, people, patience. Yeah. Even though I've never seen a brand new paint job fail because it was sealed too soon, it's just a good best practice. It is, it is. Better be safe than sorry. Hey, especially yeah. someone else's that's one thing you can't Especially eat. somebody else's investment. <laughs> yeah, you can't yeah. really like, oh, hi, I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, now I'm paying for a new paint job. Yeah, don't worry. We'll just take care of yeah, that. Yeah, we'll just take yeah. care of it. The four weeks goes by pretty fast anyway. Yeah, so. no, yeah. That's where you just think around with some other little projects. All right, so with that being said, I want to say thank you to Justin. But before we say adios for this edition, don't forget we're back again at 3 o'clock today with Flex, I do believe, is our next one coming up. And got a really cool giveaway on that one. But speaking of giveaways, time for the contest. Here's what we're going to do. What I need you to do, I have three of these inspiration coatings, and I have three of the, or what is this? That's this is the view. View, view coating. Oh, I read the inspiration right there. <laughs> I had an inspiration. Inspiration line of coating. Yeah, there, there we go. go. <laughs> and that, No, that one's not. It's just the sole and the view that okay. we're giving away, all right? So what we're going to do is I need to use a hashtag and we're going to select from the hashtag when it will be announced on Friday via whichever social media where the tag came from and that's how you'll be notified if you're the winner. But we're going to do hashtag Justin PNS. That will be the hashtag. So in order to get these entered into getting these products, I need a hashtag Justin PNS put in the comments down below and on Friday. I will announce all the winners. Three views, three souls, yeah. view and souls, soul and view. We're taking souls. We're taking souls. We're taking souls. All right, with that, someone, we're giving souls at this point. We're, we're giving souls. <laughs> we're, we're like the Grim Reaper, all right? So don't forget, we'll be back at 3 o'clock. Justin, thank you. thank you, thank you. Mike, you have anything else to say? And thank you for being here. Yes, Share all the Mike new products. Always. And you can get all this stuff if you don't win it on autogeek.com. All right. Thank you, guys. See you at 3.